no quê? Hã? Jesus, look where you're going. May the Lord watch over you. Henry, I'm glad you came. How are you, Henry? What the hell? The Lord be praised. What brings you to me? So, this investigation into the Neuhof massacre getting a bit complicated. What have you found out? I tracked down a gang of robbers who recruited killers for Pribislavitz. They know the Horsons who torched Neuhof. That's excellent news. Did you find out any more? So far, not much. If I'm going to infiltrate them, I have to do what they say. That means murdering one of their former cronies, a fellow they call Pius. Apparently he was at Neuhof too. You have to kill a criminal to prove yourself to them? Huh. I don't much like the sound of it. That's not the worst of it. This pious is hiding out in the monastery pretending to be a novice. I'd have to get inside the cloisters to get at him. <laughs> Good God above, that's another matter entirely. They don't let just anyone into the cloisters, and the abbot won't give up any of the novices. Secular law has no jurisdiction inside the monastery. But this is the second time that something untoward has happened there. First the counterfeiters, now this. I'd be glad to have someone take a look inside. It seems like the only way to find Pius is to join the Order. Damned if I know how, though. A bit of meditation and learning would do you good. If it's really the only way to get to him, then you'll have to do it. I'm sorry I can't be of much help. Sadly, my relations with the monastery aren't entirely congenial. You'll have to figure something out for yourself. What should I do with Pius once I find him? Don't kill him. Bring him to the bailiff in Rate. He'll interrogate the man and give him a fair trial. It doesn't sound like an easy task, sir. Getting into the cloisters, finding Pius and then getting him to the bailiff. Far from it, lad. But I have confidence in your abilities. God, what happened to you? You look like you've been assaulted. Are you Carl by any chance? I am. Why do you ask? I've heard that you're bound for the monastery. Yes, yes, it's true. But I've convinced my faithful guardian, Manfred, to give me a few more days of freedom. Mind you, he won't let me visit the brothel. So instead, I'm devoting those days to the demon drink. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? My name is Henry. Pleased to meet you, Henry. Could we speak in private? I have some um, issues with the monastery. Really? Well, I'd love to talk about it, but we won't have privacy as long as Manfred here has his head permanently stuck up my arse. Get rid of him for me, please. God save. What can I do for you? You're Manfred, the young lord's guardian. Indeed I am. Why? Henry, I'm glad you stopped by. 
You must have a mighty thirst. Waiting here with him for days, just watching him get drunk, and not having a sip yourself. There's no doubt I'd enjoy a drink. Heaven knows I deserve it. But if I dull my senses in the slightest, that rogue will surely get up to mischief. So let's drink together. And if you start to feel unwell, I'll keep an eye on him. Like you said, you deserve some fun. I can see you're a reliable lad. So what shall we have to drink? Welcome. And while we're at it, why not have a little game? Just as you ordered. I'll bring it right away. God be with you, Henry. God be with you, Henry. <sighs> I shouldn't have pushed it. Hey, Henry, come to see us. Hmm. Up tonight. I like a beer. That's it. Your turn. Here, just as you ordered. That's all. Hey, Henry's come to see us. I, I'll be back in two shakes. Welcome, Henry. Henry, I'm glad you came. Greetings, Henry. Look where you're going! Here we are. I'm honored that a knight such as you takes an interest in me. Manfred's taken care of, just as you wanted. Thank God! He won't let me out of his sight for a second, and he's itching to get me in the monastery so he can head back home. Why are you being sent to the monastery? Like every lusty young lad, I'm fond of fair maidens, but I got too fond of one, and let's just say she was um, indisposed for nine months. But they don't send you to the monastery for that. They do, when it's the daughter of the Lord of your feet. Shit. Shit is putting it mildly. The Lord of Book of her was less than pleased. He knows he'll never marry off his daughter now, so he gave father a choice. either. 
pay him 1,000 groschen in compensation, along with my balls on a silver platter, or pay 1,000 groschen and put me away somewhere no one will ever see me again. Why does your guardian never leave your side? So I don't run away. Of course, I'm free to walk around, but he watches every step I take and won't stop until I'm behind the monastery walls. Well, he's not watching you now. What good is that to me when he has all the money, and even my saddle and riding cloak under lock and key? Why don't you just run away? Bare arsed. What the hell would I do? I don't know how to work, I have no money, and that old bastard's even taken my cloak. He has me in the palm of his hand. But there are poor people everywhere, and they get by somehow. If I have to choose between hunger and poverty on one hand and the monastic life on the other, I'm afraid the monastery wins. If I could only steal that old man's pouch, I'd be gone faster than lightning, and no one would ever see me again. That's all, then. I've got what you need. Excellent. Give me the purse. May the Lord watch you can do as you like with the ring. Here. Enjoy it. Here you are. Good luck, no matter what you plan on doing with those monks. Best be on your way now before Manfred finds out that he's been robbed. And what are you going to do? Get my things together and disappear. I want to be as far away as possible before that old man even knows I'm gone. I'm glad you stopped by. What the hell? There. Satisfied? I'm Carl. I'm supposed to enter as a novice. We expected you sooner. Weren't you supposed to come here with your guardian? It's been so hectic lately, people will keep turning up out of the blue. He gave me the papers and left me at the gate. You must be used to that, though. I'm not the first novice here, am I? True enough. You'll meet some of them inside. Well, we'll see. Can you read and write? Naturally. I wouldn't be here otherwise. So then, are you ready to enter the order of St. Benedict and renounce forever the temptations of this world? I am. Then you must rid yourself of all your worldly possessions. Sell them or give them to the poor and needy or donate them to the monastery. You may not enter this place burdened by worldly goods. 
Inside the gatehouse is a trunk in which you will find monks' robes. Put away all your possessions and dress yourself in the habit. Then you may rest a while, while I go and see the prior to arrange matters for your acceptance. Hey, watch! Not his usual grouchy self at all. Strange feeling being without all of that. I didn't realise how much I'd grown used to it. Everything's prepared. It's time for you to take your vows. Do I really have to wear this? You'd better get used to it. You'll be wearing it for the rest of your life. Brothers in Christ, we have gathered here today to welcome a new novice into our midst. Dear brother, forget your former life and embrace your new vocation in the community of the monks of St. Benedict. Opus Dei, Obedientia, Obprobria, the service of God, obedience, and endurance of all discomfort. These are the cornerstones and succor of our order, which on this day shall become your own. Suscipe me, Domine, secundum eloquium tuum et vivam. Et non confundas me ab expectatione mea. Suski pe me domine secundum. In loquium tuum vivam, et, et non confundas me ab expectatione me uh. Accept your new name, Brother Gregor and wear it with honor. Welcome, brother. Welcome, brother. I am Antonius, a novice like you. I've been instructed to guide you around the monastery and tell you what you can expect and what your duties will be. Thanks for helping me out during the ceremony. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. You don't know Latin, do you? 
Don't worry. Work in the scriptorium will teach you fast enough. Why exactly are you here? Was it your choice? Or did someone force you to come? I'm being punished. If it were up to me, I'd still be spending my days in taverns and my nights with whores. I don't envy you. Unfortunately, you're here for the rest of your life. Would you tell me something about yourself? I'm a novice and I'm here because I'd make a poor merchant. I like books and I want an education. Although I must say, so far the monastic life's been quite... unexpected. Let's go then. Good. But before we do, here's a letter directly from the prior telling you all your regular duties from tomorrow onwards. Make sure to read it this evening, so you know how things work. Right, we can go now. Follow me closely. I'll explain everything as we go. Remember one word. Discipline. It's your job to work and pray. You serve the Lord now, not your own bodily needs. Watch your step, brother. Peace be with you, brother. Pay more attention, brother. This is the way to the dormitory, where we all sleep. You'll find a free bed there, which is now yours. Do you know the first thing the monastery taught me? To appreciate sleep. We rise before dawn every day. It takes a bit of getting used to. Pay more attention, brother. This is the garden, a place for silent contemplation and meditation. Centuries ago, this monastery was founded by the most esteemed of brothers, St. Procopius. His earthly remains can be found in a cave under the monastery, and his spirit wanders the corridors at night, punishing any misbehaving novices. <laughs> so beware. Here are the fratery and scriptorium, together with the library. These are the places where we work. Ora et labora. Pray and work. As a novice, you must always listen to your superior brethren. And above us monks are the prior and the circators, who punish every infraction. You'll know them by the canes they carry. Do what they say. This is the refectory, where we come together to eat. During meals, you must be silent. Only one brother reads aloud from the rule of St. Benedict. The rule is the only law we recognize, with the exception of those from God himself. If you break any of its precepts, expect a swift punishment. But I've already told you about the circuitors. The library, the pride of our monastery, a trove of learning. We don't just read books here, we also copy them. You, too, will learn how. And that's all. Today you are still free from duty. But tomorrow you begin work like the others. If you need anything, ask any of the brothers. We will be glad to help you. And I recommend you get to know the other novices. You already know me. Then there is Siskin, Yodok, and Lucas. Thanks for showing me around. There is a lot to learn here. Will you tell me something about yourself? There's not much to tell. I lived in Vlashim, and after my father died, I found out I wasn't much of a merchant. So I left the shop to my brother, and decided to become a monk. It's peaceful here. There's food and lots of time to read. So you chose to come here? It may seem strange, but I'm one of the few novices that did. I might be the only one. The truth is, the idea of spending my life in a monastery was more appealing than being cooped up in a greasy old shop. I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. Are there any rifts between the brothers? Yes. From the moment talk began about electing a new abbot, it's been like a hornet's nest here. 
Strange you haven't noticed. Tell me something about electing the abbot. Abbot Peter is old. When he dies, they'll have to select a new abbot from amongst the brethren. The candidates are John and Nevlas. And if you ask me for my opinion, Nevlas is definitely the right man. Unfortunately, no one cares about my opinion because novices get no say. What are the roles of the various monks here? Someone takes care of the library, someone else the garden. The abbot supervises everyone, and in his absence, the prior. But it's the circators you should worry about. They're the brothers who'll make sure we observe the rule. They can be quite strict, so if you want to avoid getting punished, always act righteously and do your duties honestly. Well, that's all. Thank you for your time, brother. Ah, Gregor, talk to me. I need to make oh, a confession. To me. I'm no priest, but tell me what you've done. It's probably nothing to worry about. I'm here in the monastery looking for a thief. He had a hand in burning down the Neuhof stud. You don't say. And who are you to take such an interest? Someone whose job it is to investigate the case, find the perpetrators and make sure they get the punishment they deserve. Punishment? Do you intend to punish them here, in the monastery? I don't know yet. I'm still just on their trail. Perhaps you could help me find him? The missing thief? If I knew anything, I'd tell you. But I suppose it must be one of the novices. I've only recently heard about the Neuhof incident. And all the other brethren have been here much longer than that. I know. Aside from me, there are only four novices, but still, I don't know which one he could be. Three? Please, leave me out of it. And you're right that it could be any one of them. No one knows anything about Lucas. Siskin might be a lot of things, but a monk isn't one of them. And Yodok is a slimy worm. It wouldn't surprise me if he was behind that massacre. Actually, the more I think about it, the less I like that Yodok. He's a treacherous rat who'd do anything to get in someone's good books. The thought of Yodok at Neuhof since chills up my spine. I don't think it was him. But please, don't tell a soul what we've been talking about. Don't fret, my friend. Your secrets are locked inside my lips.
Watch your step, brother. Pay more attention, brother. Pay more attention, brother. Slow down, bro. In a rush to pray. I was mute and was humble, yet silence even good. Here the prophet shows that if the spirit of silence. Watch your step, pay more attention, brother. So much in a rush to in a rush to pray. What's your step, brother? Therefore, since this spirit of silence is so important, permission to speak should rarely be granted even to perfect disciples, even though it be for good, holy, edifying conversation. For it is written, in much speaking you will not escape sin. And in another place, death and life are in the power of the tongue. For speaking and teaching belong to the master. The disciples part to be silent to listen. And for that reason, if anything has to be asked of the superior, it should be asked with all the humility and submission inspired by reverence. Who would you choose as the new up? Why should I? Brother? What? I was feeling... Brother. I what? This is... While I was locked up, someone was making quite a racket in the cellar. Blind drunk, I'm sure of it. I wonder what's been going on. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down, brother. Slow down, brother. Slow down. Slow down, brother. Watch your step, brother. And again, fixed hours in sacred reading. To that end, we think that the times for each may be prescribed as follows. From Easter until the calends of October. When they come out from prime in the morning, let them labor at whatever is necessary until about the fourth hour. And from the fourth hour until about the sixth, let them apply them. Slow down. Why such haste? You've got a strong constitution. Anyone else would have certainly died. What... What happened? Let me tell you a little story. Once upon a time, there was a young boy. He was lost and miserable. He had no future. He was tempted by his friends into doing some foolish things. But he wasn't truly bad. Because when it came down to it, he ran away rather than keep doing foolish deeds. His former friends didn't take kindly to that, though, and wanted to punish him. So they sent a hunting dog to find him and rip his throat. The boy wasn't stupid, though, and he knew that the hound was coming. He poisoned some food, and when the hound showed up, he gave it to him. He didn't expect the beast to live, but it did. 
and all of a sudden the boy was sorry for what he tried to do. So he offered to make a bargain with the hound. I think I understand you. But the beast would need to know what deal he's being offered. You know, we're both pawns in someone else's game. They have plans for us. But we don't have to let them use us. We can just forget all about it and go our own way. I, I was a bandit and I was at Nyhoff. I've robbed and stolen, but I swear to God I've never in my life slain innocent people. What I saw at Nyhoff made me realize my life was worth shit, but I still had a chance to change for the better. Here in the monastery I've had plenty of time to think things over, but then you showed up and fucked it all up. So the evildoer changes his ways and finds God. What exactly are you proposing? Both of us can leave this place. You can go back to your people, and I can go somewhere where I can live out my life in peace, and no one will try to kill me. If we work together, we can both get what we want. You're right. But the people who sent me will find out if I don't kill you. They won't if we're clever about it. No one has to die. Before we make a run for it, we'll make it look like someone's killed me. Loads of blood, a tattered scrap of my habit, and footprints leading towards the river. No one will bother looking for my body there. There we'll split up. You go for your bounty, and I'll get as far away from here as I can. Good. Let's do it your way. Good. I'm glad that despite our initial discord, we could reach an agreement. Here, take something to calm your stomach. Now we'll need the keys to the monastery and some blood to make the tracks. What are you going to do? I need to get ready for a long journey. Prepare supplies, get some normal clothing somehow, that sort of thing. You can escape in that habit, but I need to vanish as fast as I can. What do I need the keys to the monastery for? How else will we get out? This place is practically a prison. Do you mean these keys? What? I'm not going to ask you how you got your hands on those, you devious lad. And where am I supposed to get my hands on blood in a monastery? You'll find a parchment in the kitchen with a list of ingredients on it. All the things they're ordering. Add blood for making soup to the list. And when it's delivered the next day, take it before anyone notices it's even come. All right, that's everything I need to know. I can get started. Excellent. Come and see me once you have everything. And try to be as fast as you can. And Gregor, thank you. That would sound more sincere if you hadn't just tried to kill me. That's why I'm thanking you for being so reasonable despite what I did. For what it's worth, I'm glad the poison didn't kill you. And we can both come through this alive if we work together.
Go away. Novices aren't allowed here. Go away. Novices aren't allowed here. What do you want, brother? You shouldn't be here. I'm Gregor. I know. I saw you at the ceremony. My name is Neblis, and I'm the provost here. I'm in charge of the monastery's property, as well as handling trade with the outside world. That means you get to leave the monastery? No, not at all. I just write lists and send them out. I'm here to work. Excellent. I've been waiting for you. There's the alchemist's laboratory. You'll find ingredients in the chests next to it. Today's task, two cockerel potions. Once you finish them, you'll find me somewhere nearby. Don't forget to let me know when you're done so I can check them. Brother. Brother Cyril mentioned that you didn't submit your parchments in the scriptorium. You're right, brother. This is your first warning. Brother Nevelis says that you didn't fin- You're right, brother. This is your second warning. You were somewhere you shouldn't- Very well.
thought of him. Watch your step. In a rush to pray? Then watch your step, brother. Watch your step. Watch your step, brother. Watch your step. Watch your step, brother. Ah, oh, Gregor. Talk to me. I have everything we need for the escape. Excellent. Straight out of Vespers, we'll meet in the dormitory. We'll have to get it all done before the monks have finished dinner. What exactly is your plan? And why can't we do it at night? We're going to prepare a little riddle they'll never solve. And why at mealtime? Because we need the dormitory as well as the church to be empty. Then at night we'll escape. Do you follow? Take everything with you and don't forget the keys. Good. Once evening mass ends, I'll be in the dormitory. Slow down. In a rush to pray. Why such haste? The first degree of humility is obedience without delay. This is the virtue of those who hold nothing dearer to them than Christ, who, because of the holy service they have professed, and the fear of hell and the glory of life everlasting. Brother, and far from gain, what are you doing here? As this, he will You're right. This is murmurers, unless he amend and make satisfaction. It's a mystery, but one that will be soon solved. Ah. What do you desire? I'm here to... What do you desire? Praise be to Christ. What do you desire?
Praise be to God. For a moment there, I was worried you weren't coming. Give me that blood. This is the exact spot where you pushed me off the gallery. Slow down, brother. Was Slow that... down. Slow down, brother. You! What the hell are you fooling about here for? Be off right now or I'll fucking... Why such you haste? Thank you for helping me out. Now we must each go our own way. I can't just let you leave. You're a criminal. What are you on about? Did you really help me escape just to betray me? I'm truly sorry, but you were there at the Neuhof massacre and you're a valuable witness. I'm taking you to the bailiff. Gregor, you can't be serious. I thought I won't be taken anywhere. I'd rather die than lose my freedom. This is one of the men who raised Neuhoff. He should be able to tell you something useful. But I need to ask a favour. I need you to keep him out of sight so his accomplices don't know he's been caught. Fine work. And I'll do as you say. I'll find a deep, dark hiding place where no one will hear me interrogate him. And while we're at it, I'll have your things brought here. Wait here a while. Put it down there. 